Hey everyone, welcome back to Medrevisions. In today's episode, we have a particularly interesting case that dives into the realm of psychiatry. If you're studying for PLAB or UKMLA, or even USMLE exams, or someone just curious about psychiatric cases, this one's for you. Before we continue, pause the video and try to answer this in 50 seconds. So, we have a 36-year-old man who's been brought to the emergency department by the police for causing a disturbance at a public library. He's been exhibiting some intriguing behaviors and has no known psychiatric history. What do you think his diagnosis is? So, the correct answer is A, manic episode. But, as always, let's dive deeper into why that is. First off, our patient exhibits grandiose delusions, believing he's about to make a world-altering discovery in the energy sector. He's been speaking in a pressurized manner, quickly shifting topics and appearing easily distractible. He's also been working tirelessly on this so-called revolutionary project, reporting decreased need for sleep over the past four days. Family members say that these behaviors have been escalating for at least a week and mark a significant change from his usual self. That's key. Now, all of these symptoms tick the boxes for a manic episode, a component of bipolar disorder. During a manic episode, you'd see at least three or more of these symptoms lasting for a minimum of a week. Symptoms can include grandiosity, decreased need for sleep, rapid speech, distractibility, and high-risk activities. While some of the other options like paranoid personality disorder or paranoid schizophrenia could exhibit some overlapping symptoms, they don't fit the overall clinical picture as neatly as a manic episode. After diagnosing a manic episode, what's the next step? Well, psychiatric consultation is crucial for further evaluation and management. The examiner will want you to know these as well. Usually, the examiner will present you with different styles of questions, therefore, ensure you check out our question bank, which has helped thousands of doctors to pass their exams. We offer more than 4,600 exam-style questions with excellent notes, which are constantly updated to the latest guidelines, all for just $34 for three months. Before we continue with the lecture, pause the video and try to answer this in 50 seconds. We have a 35-year-old woman who's been experiencing persistent low mood, anhedonia, and fatigue for several months. She also has sleep issues, difficulty concentrating, and has become socially withdrawn. What's really interesting is that she mentions a period of increased energy and optimism about a year ago. What do you think her diagnosis could be? If you picked E, bipolar disorder, you nailed it. But why is this the most accurate diagnosis? Let's dig deeper. This patient has shown episodes of low mood which resemble depression, but she's also had a period of elevated mood and increased energy, which could be considered a manic or hypermanic phase. The combination of both makes bipolar disorder a likely candidate. Why not depression? Her current symptoms sure look like a depressive episode, but remember she had that earlier phase of elevated mood. That leans us towards bipolar disorder rather than just depression. Regarding mania and hypomania, note that, these phases are part of the bipolar disorder spectrum but don't cover her current depressive symptoms. What about obsessive-compulsive disorder? OCD usually involves repetitive behaviors and intrusive thoughts, and doesn't fit well with this patient's mood swings. In our future video, we will discuss obsessive-compulsive disorder as this is a commonly tested question in the exam. So, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an update. Well, the key takeaway from this case is Bipolar disorder can often masquerade as unipolar depression, especially if the patient seeks help during a depressive episode. It's super important to consider the patient's entire symptom history for an accurate diagnosis. Look for episodes of low mood and episodes of high mood. Now that we have discussed the diagnosis, let's discuss the management with this MCQ. Pause the video and try to answer this in 50 seconds. We have a 32-year-old man who's been under psychiatric care for erratic mood changes, ranging from elevated moods to severe depressive episodes. He's improved recently but wants to minimize his medication due to side effects. What single medication should he continue long-term to prevent future mood swings? If you chose E, mood stabilizers, you're spot on. But why is this the right choice? Firstly, our patient's symptoms strongly suggest a diagnosis of bipolar affective disorder. 
Mood stabilizers like lithium or valproate are your go-to options for long-term prevention of both manic and depressive episodes in bipolar disorder. While antipsychotics can be helpful, especially during manic phases, they may not be as effective at managing the depressive episodes in the long term. They also often come with a host of side effects. Antidepressants might help with depression, but can actually trigger a manic episode if not balanced with a mood stabilizer. Anxiolytics like benzodiazens, for example, can calm acute agitation but aren't suitable for the long-term stabilization of moods. When it comes to stimulants, these are a big no-no here. Stimulants like Adderall can actually exacerbate manic symptoms. So, in summary, if you're dealing with bipolar disorder, mood stabilizers are usually your best bet for long-term management. They can help smooth out the highs and lows, giving you a more balanced life. All right then, try this case. Pause the video and try to answer this in 50 seconds. This one has a bit of a twist, hope you will get it right. Our case for today involves a 34-year-old woman who's feeling unusually energetic and on top of the world. She's making significant financial decisions like buying a new house and cars and is super impulsive, especially in social and sexual activities. But she's not experiencing any hallucinations or delusions, nor does she have a history of depressive episodes. What's your guess? If you selected C, hypomania, congratulations. You nailed it. But why is hypomania the most likely diagnosis here? This patient is experiencing elevated mood, decreased need for sleep, impulsivity, and distractibility. Hypomania is less severe than mania and doesn't involve functional impairment or psychotic symptoms, which this patient denies having. That's our giveaway. When it comes to mania, it is like hypomania, but turned up to 11. It can include hallucinations or delusions and often requires hospitalization. Our patient isn't there. Well, with regards to bipolar disorder, this one's tricky. Bipolar disorder does include episodes of elevated mood, like mania or hypomania, but it also includes depressive episodes, which our patient hasn't reported. Core psychotic symptoms like hallucinations or delusions are missing here, making schizophrenia unlikely. And it is not obsessive-compulsive disorder, because OCD revolves around obsessions and compulsions, which our patient doesn't have. There is another topic related to bipolar disorder that has commonly been tested in the exams. As usual, before we dive further, pause the video and try to answer this question in less than 50 seconds. So, we've got a 32-year-old woman who comes into the emergency department with some pretty unsettling symptoms. She's got coarse tremors, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. On top of that, she's been feeling lethargic and fatigued for a week. She's got bipolar affective disorder and has been taking lithium carbonate. Based on the clues given, what do you think is going on? And, the correct answer is D. Lithium toxicity. Now let's break it down. Lithium toxicity is the star of this medical drama. The patient's symptoms, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, tremors, and impaired concentration, classic features. Her elevated calcium levels and reduced EGFR, which indicates renal impairment, are the smoking guns. Her kidneys aren't clearing the lithium as they should, leading to toxicity. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome, now, this is commonly seen with antipsychotics, but our patient's meds don't include these. Plus, she doesn't have the muscle rigidity, fever, or autonomic dysregulation associated with this syndrome. Regarding hyperparathyroidism. Yes, it could cause hypercalcemia, but it's a red herring here. Our patient's history of bipolar disorder and lithium treatment make it a less likely culprit. Plus, hyperparathyroidism usually doesn't cause coarse tremors. What about hypothyroidism? This disorder would present with symptoms like heat intolerance, mood swings, and palpitations, which our patient doesn't have. Malignant hypothermia, this is usually triggered by general anesthesia and would present with rapidly increasing body temperature and muscle rigidity, not matching our patient's symptoms. All the options are high-yield topics that are commonly tested in the exam, we will cover those in depth in our future videos. Feel free to subscribe to our channel so when we upload, you will be notified. Learning points Always suspect medication toxicity if the patient is symptomatic and has a medication history like this one. 
Lithium toxicity can manifest in many ways, gastrointestinal, neurological, and renal. Don't overlook elevated calcium levels, they might be a clue for lithium toxicity. And last but not least, always, always monitor renal function in patients on medications like lithium that rely on the kidneys for clearance. Here's a quick summary of the important points you should note for the exam. During a manic episode, you'd see at least three or more of these symptoms lasting for a minimum of a week. Symptoms can include grandiosity or hallucinations, decreased need for sleep, rapid speech, distractibility, and high-risk activities. Well, hypomania is less severe than mania and doesn't involve functional impairment or psychotic symptoms. Bipolar disorder involves cycles of depression and either mania or hypomania. Mood stabilizers like lithium or valproate are your go-to options for long-term prevention of both manic and depressive episodes in bipolar disorder. If a patient is on lithium and the symptoms are nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, tremors, and impaired concentration, think lithium toxicity. Sometimes the examiner will want you to know the precipitating factors for lithium toxicity. The important ones to remember are dehydration, renal impairment, diuretics, especially bendroflumathiazide, ACE inhibitors, NSAIDs. When it comes to bipolar disorder, there are two terms the examiner will want you know, which are mood incongruence and mood congruence. First up, let's talk about mood incongruence. Mood incongruence describes a situation where a person's beliefs or actions do not align with their current mood. For instance, imagine laughing at a funeral or believing you have superpowers while going through a depressive episode. This is mood incongruence in action. Now, let's look at the opposite end of the spectrum, that is mood congruence. Mood congruence refers to psychotic symptoms where the person's beliefs or actions are consistent with their mood. An example would be feeling intensely suicidal after the death of a loved one or believing you have special powers while in a manic state. In short, mood congruence, beliefs or actions match mood. Phew, that was a lot to unpack, but you made it. If you learned something new today, hit that like button and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Any questions or want us to cover a specific topic? Drop it down in the comments. Until next time, keep learning, keep saving lives, and I'll see you in the next video.